How's it going guys? Vlad here. Just wanted to make a quick video since I've been absent from YouTube for a while. Uh, hope you had a great holiday season. Uh, Happy New Year. Wish you all the best in 2015. And uh, like I said, just a quick video answering some questions that have been posted on um, a lot of my videos and hopefully you get something out of it. Uh, if you have more questions and would like me to answer them in the next uh, question and answer video, please uh, let me know down below. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the first question that I found very interesting is, can you use the shift registers, uh, which I've covered in several videos now, uh, as a servo driver? And this, the straightforward answer is yes, but it would be a fairly complicated uh, thing to do because they're not meant to uh, drive PulseMint with modulation signals, but instead they're mo they're mostly used for on-off signals. So you can toggle LEDs, you can toggle DC motors with them, you can toggle relays, transistors, whatever you want. But pulse with modulation would require um, some thinking and some adaptation, I guess, of the shift registers. So honestly, I would not recommend them. Uh, I looked around, there is a chip called the TLC5940. Uh, I'm going to post a link to it uh, somewhere on the screen. Uh, it is a chip which allows you to drive up to 16 channels with Paul with, Paul with modulation. So you can use that to, to drive LEDs or servos or anything else that requires those kind of signals. So uh, once again, to answer your question, it is probably possible, but highly um, it would involve a lot of uh, programming and a lot of tinkering with the shift registers. So I would not recommend it myself. The second question that I've been getting on quite a few of my videos is, can you use a larger resistance uh, to limit the current of the LEDs? So these LEDs, I've demonstrated them on shift registers. I've shown them on analog outputs, I've shown them with uh, range finders. Whenever you have an LED that's connected to 5 volts, uh, you always use a current limiting resistor. So, can you make them larger? The quick answer is, of course you can. So, two things that you need to consider. First of all is, um, in order, so your minimum resistance that you can put should be uh, based off your uh, maximum current allowed through the LED. So normally your data sheet would specify something like 20 milliamps is a standard. If you have something that's uh, out of the ordinary, you may need a, uh, you may have a different current rating, but generally it's 20 milliamps for just a small uh, LED that I've used, small uh, two pin green LED, red LED, um, whatever you want. So the way you calculate the resistance that you want is V equals IR, so voltage equals current times resistance. Your voltage is going to be the applied voltage minus the voltage drop across the LED. So generally speaking, if you apply 5 volts, you would subtract the 2.7, 2.3, whatever the value is based on your data sheet. And then you would um, essentially divide that voltage by the current in order to calculate the resistance. And keep in mind that you always want to go slightly above that resistance. Um, just a simple example, you cannot find a, uh, I don't know, 198 ohm resistor. So you can either make a combination of several ones or simply just take one that's 200 ohms, for example, or 220. Um, so those values should work. And as far as the going very high go, so putting like a 1K ohm resistor, so what that's gonna do is essentially limit the brightness of your LED, which is also uh, it may or may not be desirable based on your application. So if you want to save energy, you obviously want to um, have uh, the lowest amount of current going through your LED as possible. But like I said, the trade-off would be losing the brightness. So if you don't care about um, your LED being barely visible when it's uh, in daylight and you want to put a 1 ohm resistor or even 10 kilo ohm, obviously it's not going to be it's going to be barely, barely visible, you can. Uh, so that is not a, uh, that's not stopping you, it's just going to be very uh, dim. So that is that. So yes, you can use uh, any value that you like, as long as it doesn't, uh, it's not below your uh, spec of the current. So the last question I wanted to address for this Q&A video is, 
Uh, someone asked me why do you use a transistor to drive the relay um, with the Arduino. So obviously you're gonna have different relays. Some of them are gonna require very low uh, currents. Some of them are gonna require higher currents. So just by pure habit, um, instead of toggling the relay on its own with a, an Arduino pin, which can only source up to 40 milliamps, as you can check in your um, at Mega 328 data sheet, I would just rather use a transistor because then I'm driving uh, a relay which in my case pulls 200 milliamps um, through the bus itself so I'm not using the Arduino pin at all. The Arduino pin is only providing uh, several milliamps for the transistor to turn on and off and the transistor in turn drives the relay. So to answer your question yes you may get away with uh, just the Arduino pin but it is preferable in general to use a transistor and not the microcontroller on itself but like I said it's your choice and you can do it with uh, a lot of relays out there so those were the most um, interesting questions that I got on my video um, a few other things I'm gonna try and be a bit more active and answer people who are requesting data sheets or just want some more info um, another thing I had my um, I had some issues with the website uh, which is staticjolt.com where I post some of my tutorials and uh, essentially uh, what's it called the schematics and the source codes of what I've programmed in the Arduino and I had some issues where the site would actually display just random values um, I believe I just had to update the WordPress version as well as some of the plugins so that should be fixed uh, I've only seen the issue on mobile before and I haven't seen it since so let me know if that's still uh, if that's still the case I can port it to a different installation or try and troubleshoot the site I'm not really sure what the issue was and finally once again thank you guys for watching if you have more questions post them down below um, I also wanted to ask you if you would be interested in a less technical video series um, I'm, I'm actually preparing a few videos right now um, a few people have been asking me like how did I prepare uh, for my first job out of college uh, what steps did I take during college in order to make sure my uh, essentially my interview was solid so I'm gonna give you some tips and hints uh, here and there in a few videos so let me know if you would be interested in a series like that and once again, uh, if you want to subscribe, if you like the content, please click the button below. Leave me some comments. Thank you for watching. Bye.